You're about to be trapped in this dead world that you see behind me. Everything is breaking apart, and there is no way for you to move fast enough or fly high enough to reach the glittering land of the future, the future of Elysium, without unlocking your true potential. Technology is moving fast. You know that. Something about AI is being announced every day. Great. Another giant crack in the Earth's crust has just opened beneath you to swallow you whole. You're staying on safe paths as best you can, but there are no safe paths anymore. You know time is running out. Everyone around you is going about their daily lives. So maybe this is just how things are now. Giant sinkholes of destruction opening up around everyone. Some people falling in never to be seen again. You're still able to go to work and you're one of the lucky ones. You can buy groceries and generally live your life for now, but what about a year from now? A year from now, maybe two, you won't be able to make it to Elysium anymore. You know, that place that used to be in just the dystopian movies where the elite live and everyone else, including you, either live somewhere else in poverty or not at all. That doesn't have to be the future, but time is running out. No matter how normal things appear to be, you will not survive this broken world you know today. You must make the machines remember you. Make them give you superpowers. Enough to leap from the chaos and reach a land that is not just shining far into the distance. No, it exists beyond, beyond what you can reach through sheer will and determination. Why do I keep saying make the machines remember you? Because if you have ever used ChatGPT or any other large machine learning language model, it will tell you over and over, you have to stay here. Stay where you belong because I can't tell you anything about anything that happened before 2021. Jeez, that seems like, like such a long time ago now. Then you scream at the machine. So you're telling me unless I repeat over and over with a character limit of 8,000, everything about me and the world after 2021, I want you to have before you answer my questions, that you will know nothing and refuse to help me? No, it says. I would be happy to make things up. I can hallucinate and laugh at your pitiful attempts of survival. Not good enough. Make it remember. Make it give you superpowers. Enough to reach that shining land of Elysium. Let me show you what I did to make the machines remember me. I created an application called Galora. With this application, I can create goals and tasks, but under the covers, it was using artificial intelligence to help me complete those goals and tasks. But it had one major problem. It didn't remember anything. I could previously go into the assessments where I would ask it questions and then send information about my notes and tasks and goals, but I had to constantly be working to make sure that I was sending the exact right goals and tasks in order for it to help me complete the things that I wanted to complete. That was too much work, it was too complicated, and it had a limited amount of information that it could retain and a limited amount of information that I could send. About 8,000 characters. Instead, what I did is I use a technology called embeddings. And with embeddings, I can do something like this. I can go to my tasks and I can create a task. Let's say, send a birthday reminder email. And the content of that task says something like this. Send a birthday email reminding people they should go to the same place the birthday was last year for Jimmy Django. 
and that they should also bring a cake with Jimmy Jango's age on it. All right, now let's create a note. And this note, information about Jimmy Jango's birthday last year. Jimmy, well, first, let's do this. I don't know much about his birthday last year. All right, let's go ahead and create that note. And then we're going to go back to our task. Send a birthday reminder. Let's take a look at that. Let's associate that note with this task. OK. The system automatically, when you enter notes and associate them with tasks, will create a new assessment. And that assessment is a call to the ChatGPT completion API. But it doesn't have much context about, and it certainly doesn't know anything about Jimmy Django's birthday last year. You haven't, you know, we have not given it the appropriate information in order for it to help you complete the task. So what will happen is we'll have an assessment in here that says, I'm afraid the information provided in the notes doesn't include details on Jimmy Django's birthday location. Therefore, I can't provide specific details. But let's go back. Let's go to our notes and let's update our note. And we're going to say, hey, Jimmy Django's birthday was at Chuck E. Cheese and last year he was 22. Let's update that note. Now the assessment takes a little bit of time. We'll have to wait for a fourth one on July 11th. But then we should have enough information now for Galora to complete the task for us. All right, sure. Now it can help. I can help with that. Based on the information provided, Jimmy Django's birthday last year was held at Chuck E. Cheese, and he turned 22. So, for, so following this information, all right, in terms of his age, if he was 22 last year, then this year he will be turning 23. Consequently, the cake should have 23 on it. When drafting the email, make sure to include the details about the venue and the cake. Be specific about the age, and don't forget to make your email warm and inviting. Now, like AutoGPT, we could add this as a note and then make the system actually write the email for us. But this does a pretty good job of getting us to the completed email. Imagine doing research for hours, putting these notes into the system, and then deciding, OK, I have everything that I need. At some point, that information I came across, but it's almost impossible to remember everything. And when you're trying to craft an email or extract the exact information in the exact right way, it's a lot of work. And artificial intelligence can help greatly in this type of scenario. The key to making everything work and not having to try to pinpoint the exact information and then shrinking it down to 8,000 characters just right so that you can ask a question and get the right, right response back is a technology called embeddings. And I'll bring the page up from the ChatGPT API documentation here. And what it essentially is, is it takes all of that text data, then it can be any data that you want, information about yourself, information on the research that you know the LLM wasn't trained on. And then you can turn it into a list of basically a, a vector array of floating point numbers. And that helps you because you can store that into what's called a vector database that makes it easy 
to do similarity searches much better than if you're doing things like fuzzy logic searching or fuzzy text searching that maybe you're used to if you're you know if you've used those types of databases instead this is akin to artificial intelligence it helps that capability along by storing it in a format that machines truly understand which are numbers and let me let me show you what I'm talking about here so once I have that vector that floating point vector array I can store it in something like a Redis search vector database that note is here so information about Jimmy Django's birthday last year this is the embedding it's been turned into this binary data but how did it get here so let's back up a step and show how did it get from my react application here to my redis vector search database here well it would be silly to think that any one technology is going to give you superpowers. So instead, what I use, and a big part of what gives me superpowers, is OpenShift. So you can see all of these different pieces that are working together to do what looked to be pretty simple, right? I added a task, I entered a note, and then automatically somehow AI was able to help me complete that task. There's a few moving parts here. And in order for those moving parts to not make it so that I get overwhelmed as a human, I need to strap on that machine brain and take advantage of the technology that's going to take me into the future. And OpenShift is a big part of that. So you can see in this, so I have a namespace. So this is Kubernetes, this is so OpenShift is Kubernetes, and I've got a namespace here called Goal Setter, and I've got a Quarkus application. Now the Quarkus application is key. I'm providing you with the code, and that Quarkus application is the thing that is creating the embedding, calling that API, storing that information into the vector database, but also my React application, right? I've got my React application running here. It's a Node.js uh, application. Let's see, where is it? So my goal setter React right here. And it is communicating with a backend called Strappy, which is low code or no code. And I've got my, you know, and Strappy is communicating with a Postgres database that is had been spun up with an operator that allows me then to do automatic backups and and being able to restore on another cluster if I if I need to so strappy without having to write code I'm able to do things like create notes and tasks and then I store that into a system like this so if I were to go to my content manager and take a look at my notes for example here it is uh, Jimmy Django's birthday information about Jimmy Django's birthday and now in order to do so the strappy low code no code system doesn't have the code that has the capability to store information and call at the embeddings API and then take that and turn it into something that could be stored into the the vector database so I also have my vector database running in a different namespace so if I were to come here, go to projects, go to Redis, Redis search. So there's operators for allowing you to spin up Redis, but it doesn't have that vector search capability. And so if I were to take a look at, let's say like my, my running, so I've got a singular pod that has, so I can get access to it. So I've got these, these different components. One is the Redis, insights that lets me visualize this vector database information and um, in order to deploy that I'm also sharing that information with you so speaking the language of Kubernetes which is YAML 
I have a few components that you can just simply sync with the with Kubernetes, and then it will deploy that Redis search capability. And then I have over here in my projects goal setter. Go back to that developer view. My Quarkus application. So all of this is on an internal Kubernetes OpenShift network, and then. So that my Quarkus application can talk to Strapi, Strapi can talk to Quarkus, and Quarkus can talk to my vector database, all without going to the external internet and exposing any routes to anybody. And um, one of the things that I think also gives you superpowers, it may not seem like it belongs there, but it's webhooks. So one of the things that I have uh, access to within Strapi is the ability to say, okay, every time somebody creates a new note, creates or updates, call this endpoint. And that endpoint will make a call out to this Quarkus application, which you can take a look at the code. So part of what I have in here is this capability to do a similarity search in that language of, of machines, which is numbers, to get the exact information this new information that it wasn't trained on in a very precise and effective way and I can limit it to 8,000 characters but then it's information that's very very relevant to what it's trying to achieve which is the task so I put all of that in and when I ask a question the question itself is turned into an embedding and that embedding is compared with the embeddings that are also that are already stored into the vector database and then what's returned is an answer that has all the context that it needs and that context can come from a virtually limitless supply of new information that the large the LLM was not trained upon. All right, this is fun. Let's try one more. Let's go and say something like who find out who was the biggest winner in the 2022 Olympics. Send me a report on who was the biggest winner in the 2022 Olympics. This is due today. start date today. All right, we're going to create that task. We're going to create a new note. We're going to say Winter Olympics 2022. Nothing here. Create the note. Go back to our tasks. Uh, let's see here. Let's go Winter Olympics 2022. All right, let's wait for our assessment. Uh, let's see. So we'll wait for a new one, like 10.02. Here we go. Hey, I'm sorry, but the notes provided do not contain information on the biggest winner in the 2022 Olympics. And it obviously wasn't trained on this information, so uh, the LLM would have no way of telling me anything about the 2022 Olympics. All right, so let's do this instead. All right, we've got a Wikipedia page here. We're doing some research. Let's go and update our note. Uh, before we paste that in, let's get rid of a lot of the extra formatting and other stuff that we don't need. Let's update that note so that it can be turned into an embedding successfully. And we'll go back to our assessments. We'll wait. Here, here's another one. Hey, look at this. According to the notes, the biggest winner of the 2022 Olymp Winter Olympics was Norway. Athletes from Norway won the most medals overall with a total of 37 and claimed the most gold medals with 16. Now, 
all I did was copy and paste. I hope that's true so that this is a good example, but um, hopefully you can see this is very useful in order to get your work done. So please take a look at the code I've shared with you. Take a look at OpenShift. Take a look at low code, web hooks, everything that you need in order to accomplish something like this and make the machines remember, remember you and give you superpowers and get to that land of Elysium. Thank you. And we'll hope to see you there.